Hi, welcome back. Today I am talking about products in my collection that I really just don't love. I look at these on a daily basis and I bypass them. I just, I look at them and I'm like, not today, Satan. I just don't have time to deal with your side effects. You've really disappointed me in the past. I just don't feel like you're good enough. Um, I've just really been in a rut this week on video ideas and I these are just truly things that I don't pull out and that I don't talk about in videos. So I thought, why not? I'm gonna be providing some alternatives to these products. Everything I'm wearing on my face today are the products that I don't necessarily love. I will say, I did like how the look turned out. It's very 20s flapper girl-esque. Um, but I'm gonna provide alternatives for most of the products that I dislike in this video and in turn talk about some things that I would choose over them. So, you wanna see the look, wanna talk about the products, wanna get a little sassy, let's start. I made such a mistake doing like straightener curls. Does anyone's hair look terrible when they try to curl with a straightener? I just feel as if it's not my thing. So, um, to start out on a negative note, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, this is gonna be a slightly more negative video than usual, but I'm I'm hopeful that I can pull off at least a semi-decent look, okay? So first product, we're, we're gonna see Charlotte Tilbury make a couple of quick appearances. For me, Charlotte Tilbury is either absolutely yes or absolutely no. I find that there's really not a lot of in-between products. I either feel very strongly in regards to liking her products or I feel very negatively towards her products. And I have a couple in this, these first two products are Charlotte Tilbury and I've just never been blown away by them. And the first is Wonder Glow. Wonder Glow is kind of what she markets as just an illuminating style primer. It is really nothing more, in my opinion, than a lightweight lotion with some glow to it. Like it's got a little bit of, you can see that pearlescent finish. Is it pretty? Yes. It can be duped a thousand times though. I mean, there are so many products at the drugstore that have this consistency and also have the, uh, you know, fluorescent or luminous finish. And just in my collection alone, I have the Neutrogena Radiant Primer Serum. This looks identical. It feels identical. The serum is a little bit thinner, but it's going to ultimately give you the same finish. So the only reason I actually have a full size of the uh, Wonder Glow is because it was sent to me. And I rarely use it because I just, I don't feel it's worth the price. And I don't feel like it does a lot for me. I cannot tell you how disappointed I was in this foundation. Like when I saw the preview images for it, the demos, I was like, yes, come for me. This is gonna be like my new full coverage miracle. And I tried it and I swear to you, I've used it probably twice, both times. I felt like my skin looked horrendous. And it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Now, I have to say, for people with combination oily skin, I feel as if this has been like riding a little bit better for those people. On me, I just, it's very reminiscent to me of her Magic Foundation. Her Magic Foundation was actually the first product I ever tried from her. And I just don't remember being more disappointed in a foundation than Magic Foundation until this came along. Now I will say, I would probably pick this one over Magic Foundation, but it just doesn't sit good on my skin. It is just highly visible. I don't feel as if it wears well throughout the day on me. If a foundation just looks terrible from the beginning, chances are it's not gonna get better throughout the day, you know what I mean? I have not used this in several months. I'm hoping that possibly this might look a little bit better on me because I think the color might be a better match for my summertime. If I remember correctly, this might have been a little like slightly dark on me. I have it in the shade three neutral. Um, so let's give it a shot. I'm just gonna do one pump here. And I'm gonna use my Real Technique sponge because this, this is a full coverage boy. What is the smell? <laughs> it smells like baby wipes. 
just right off the bat, you can tell it's not my cup of tea because look at how much it's like immediately masking. And I get that. It is supposed to be a full coverage foundation, but damn is that full coverage. Something that I also find with Charlotte Tilbury foundations is that they do tend to oxidize. I can't remember if this one did because I feel as if I bought this in the middle of winter time and it was a little bit too dark for me. Now it seems to be slightly too light, but I'm hoping maybe it'll, it'll darken up a bit. So for my alternate product for this foundation, most of you probably know Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. This foundation is it for me. Like it's always been in my top three favorite foundations. Not to be confused with Wonder Glow, which I just talked about. I know they have similar names, but Light Wonder is the foundation and it's more of a light to medium coverage very luminous it, it just makes the skin look really youthful whereas right now i'm feeling a little flat i'm feeling a little wine on a rider meets beetlejuice you know what i mean it's it's just not for me i'm a little pale that's okay we're gonna warm this up a bit um i will say this is looking a little bit better on my skin than what i had recalled and maybe that's because I just used a beauty blender with it. Honestly, I've used this foundation so few times that I don't even remember how I used it. It's not looking as bad on my skin as I remembered. Um, so let's move into concealer and I feel like we're going to have a little color mix up here because this concealer is definitely darker than the foundation. Anyways, it's the um, Trini London Just a Touch concealer now Trini London is a brand that I reviewed several months back very cute stackable quick and easy products I wanted this brand to work for me so badly because I just so love the concept I love their coloring they have really beautiful as far as appearance goes beautiful products but I felt like it was just 50-50. Half of them worked for me, half of them did not. And this concealer slash foundation, they market it as you can use it all over or just a spot concealer. This was a big problem for me. This just, it looked bad. It looked bad on me. It was highly noticeable on my skin after just a couple hours of wear. I also felt like it did, it wasn't one of those concealer products that just looked good by itself. Um, I, I felt like I had to wear something with it for it to look acceptable. So I have it in the shade Trintron, which is kind of more of a peachier consistency. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're a little dark here. You know what, I might have to use my alternative product, which is Glossier Stretch Concealer. So you can see they're both in this kind of uh, pot form and Glossier Stretch is one of my favorite light coverage concealers. I would definitely consider this formula from Trini to be a light coverage. So uh, I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use this as my concealer because the Trintron shade is a little bit too dark for me. I will say the Glossier one is much more luminous. You can see immediately when I put it on, I have a little bit of a luminous glow going on, but I do not find it to look crepey on me throughout the day. The texture of the Trini one is much, much drier. And so I think that's where I run into that problem. Okay, we don't need much concealer today anyways. As far as bronzer goes, I didn't have a bronzer that I felt so strongly about that I just wanted to, you know, put it on blast. But I have this one that I've not used on camera yet and I've only used it a couple of times. Haven't really been totally blown away with it and I think it's just because it's really not the right color for me. But it's the um, Kaja Beachy Stamp Bronzer in the shade number two Toasty. This is the darker shade. I I don't know what possessed me to get the darker shade. It just looked a little bit cooler in tone. It's a, it's a little too dark for me, but since I'm feeling a little pale right now, it may work. So what you're supposed to do is take the little stamper in here and just stamp it on. I No, I'm sorry, but no, that's just not gonna work for me. I have to use an actual brush. So there's a little sponge down there. I just tap my brush in the sponge and then pat it on. Um, really not a bad color. Like I have, true, truthfully, I have nothing against this product yet because I haven't used it that many times. 
but I don't see myself considering this to be a staple in the future, shall we say. Got a little freaky with the brush. So yeah, just like that from where it's just slightly too dark for my skin tone, it's very easy to uh, get out of hand with. Well, I look a little bit more suitable with the bronzer, I'm not gonna lie. The foundation, truthfully, is not looking bad still. I have a feeling from what I remember, it was just how it wore on my skin throughout the day. I'm looking at my skin right now. Do I love the way it looks? No. Do I think it looks terrible? No. So, could we possibly have a turnaround on the foundation? Maybe. I'm wearing my Lana Lips lip water, by the way. I don't like the smell of the foundation though. It smells like, it smells like baby wipes, but even worse. Like maybe an expired pack of baby wipes? I don't, <sighs> okay, I know I am going to be exiled to shut the hell up city when I talk about this product because I don't think I've seen one negative review on it. And hear me out now, I'm not putting this in the banished category, okay? I'm putting this in the category of haven't really been super impressed with it. And also kind of same thing with the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation. I've only used this a handful of times. I know I'm gonna get grilled for this because I see you all asking me in the comments or recommending this product in the comments. I know a lot of you all use this. And again, I'm just in the indifferent category with this product right now. Could change my mind. It's the M Cosmetic Serum Blush. I, this is, this is my thing. I do prefer just like solid cream blushes. There, there's no hiding that, there's no denying that. If you put a liquid and a cream in front of me as far as blush goes, I'm probably gonna pick the more solid cream just because I feel as if liquids are harder to work with because they do have that higher water content to pigment ratio, which in turn can disturb your base. But these M Cosmetics ones do seem to have quite a bit of pigment to them. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it another shot. I only have one shade and the shade is Soft Amethyst. I think the shade also doesn't help because they were sold out of the two shades that I felt were probably better suited for me, which were like the nude and then maybe like the peach one. This berry shade is not one that I would generally go for, but let's give it a whirl. Okay, not bad. More pigment than what I recall. And as far as like the water content goes, as long as it's blended out on the brush really well, I'm not finding it to disturb the base. So I've got it blended out on my brush almost completely. I'm just stamping it in. It looks nice. Maybe, maybe I'll just recall this. Maybe we'll just pretend this one never happened. Okay, application was easy on that. It's not looking bad at all. It's actually quite pretty color. So this one's safe. We will put this in the safe category. Let's pretend like it didn't happen and move on to something that I can confidently say I just did not get. And that is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Pressed powder. I, the whole bite relaunch, I was very confused with. Um, I, I, I just, I didn't understand the whole relaunch. I know it was so they could make all the products vegan. Is that why? I, I'm, I'm not sure. But now it just seems like their other products aren't as valuable anymore. I always see them on sale on Sephora. I don't know what's going on, but um, as far as the Changemaker foundation goes, I was okay with that one, very indifferent. I didn't feel like it looked bad. I didn't feel like it looked amazing. But this powder, um, used it for several weeks and it's just, uh, like I have nothing to say about it. It's over, is it over $20? I put it on and I'm like, did it really do anything? I just feel as if it's really not the most flattering on my skin type and I just again with powders they're so innovative now there are so many different formulas out there and I just didn't really understand this one it, it very much reminds me of just one that you can get at the drugstore and speaking of something that I think is very similar but actually performs better is the elf sheer tint press powder 
consistency wise, they feel almost identical, but the e.l.f. one gives me a little bit more of a smoothing property. Whereas this, I, especially on my nose, I can notice it sitting on top of my nose. So um, with the e.l.f. one, I don't get that. And I also get a little bit more smoothing action. This guy right here, I have expressed my dislike for this product in previous videos. I know because I've had some people be a little combative with me on it. And I, I get it. There are so many people out there right now that love these products that I'm talking about. There's no way one product can work for every single person. But this is one I just sincerely don't get because I feel like it does nothing for my skin except disrupt my base. And it's the Nude Sticks All Over Face Color in Hey Honey. So this is their highlighter. I used to have the full size of this. I actually purchased the full size and ended up like passing it along the line somewhere because I was just so underwhelmed with it. Um, but this is kind of just like a very, very, very sheer golden highlight. My problem with it is that I feel like I don't, the color looks so pretty, like on the back of my hand right now, that looks so pretty. I feel like I only get the sticky part of this on my face. It stays completely sticky on me. And it's almost like I just get this sheer glaze of sticky on my cheek. I don't get the pretty golden color with it when I use it. I, I don't know. I'm just, I've never been a fan. Like right now I'm popping it on the backs of my cheek and I'm seeing like hardly anything in real life. It's also very tacky. That, that's 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 my big concern with it is it remains a very tacky uh, almost petroleum like jelly style feel which is weird to me because I don't get that vibe with their all over face color blushes I actually really enjoy those but with just with this particular highlighter I just don't I don't know not my favorite as far as something similar that I like better, there's actually quite a few things um, I could name off right now. Neutrogena makes one uh, called the Hydro Boost Illuminator. I've been using this one for years. You get a little bit more of that luminous payoff and it's not as sticky, not as greasy on the cheeks. Uh, classic Benefit What's Up. This one is Definitely more intense than the Nude Sticks one, but again, you don't get that sticky feeling. And then finally, Charlotte Tilbury's Beauty Light one. It's kind of like if you want that ultimate glow, like you're gonna look beaming from within. And it's a liquid, but I find that it dries down really well. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm not on board with the Nude Sticks one. I'm not even gonna use this on my brows today because I know my brows will end up looking like a disaster and I already have enough brow haters out there, so I can't risk it, okay? I just can't risk it. This was a brow product I just really did not like and it's by Physicians Formula. It's the Brow Shaping Gel from the Organic Wear line. Too wet, way too wet. That's the problem that I have. This is supposed to be like a Glossier, uh, I keep wanting to say wow brow, but that's the elf one, the Glossier boy brow. This is supposed to be kind of like, you know, slightly fibrous fill in gel for the brows. It is so wet and I hate that. And any type of brow uh, product that you're gonna be brushing through your brows with. Also, the shade that I got, which is like taupe, I, I don't know, it's like the lightest shade. Yeah, it's called Soft Taupe. It's like an orange brown. It's a horrible color. So stay away from this at all costs. My drugstore option, as I mentioned, Elf Wow Brow. This is a new Sung Hero for me. Been using it for a few months now. I've replaced my Glossier Boy Brow with it. I think it's phenomenal. It has the actual fibers in it. It's really a dry product, so it fills in without making you look like you have an ink or like marker going over your brows. I mean, just look at that. Within a few strokes compared to this little measly guy over here, I'm looking a little bit more voluminous. I'm looking fuller, filled in, more shapely. Physician's formula could never. I think all brow gels or any type of fiber gel product that you're placing in your brows needs to model 
themselves after Elf Wow Brow. Just saying. I'm gonna get a little bit closer so we can get in on some eyeshadow action. Okay, I have a couple of products to just pick a slight bone with. The two products I'm gonna talk about are very different, but I honestly couldn't decide on the two as far as like my disappointment has been or just my overall lack of usage. The first is something I had high hopes in and it's something that you all have been asking me to review in comparison to uh, a drugstore option for Laura Mercier's Caviar Stick. And it's the Pixi Endless Shade Sticks, which are cream eyeshadow sticks. These were just so underwhelming for me after trying the CoverGirl Queenship Shadow Sticks. These really missed the mark for me. I think I bought three shades. I can only find two. These were actually in like my throwaway pile because I've already used them and with like COVID going on, I'm really trying not to give a ton of my stuff to, you know, my family members. Um, so these were actually in, I have like this little Ulta bag in my room and I just put expired things in it and, you know, things that really people probably aren't going to want. And I put these in there, but then I was like, you know what? I need I need to talk about them because I didn't. And you asked me to. They're just underwhelming. They don't blend well. They aren't opaque. Um, the shade selection, I just wasn't exactly interested in. Just overall, I would just say the word to describe them was underwhelming. Secondly, and I hate to do this, but I have to Glossier Sky Washes. I had high hopes for these. I went, I purchased these knowing that they were going to be very mild, very sheer products, but just with the amount of cream eyeshadows and liquid eyeshadows that I own, these are, they're hard to work with. They're hard to get a, a desired look. They're either too little or by the time you've layered three layers, they just don't work cohesively together. So right off the bat, I have a dupe for the shade called the Pebble. Uh, this one was probably my favorite and the easiest to use. It is super, super sheer though. I mean, um, this won't even show up on skin, probably skin tones that are even darker than me. I mean, look on the back of my hand right now. But uh, Ulta makes their matte cream eyeshadows. This one's in the shade called Game Over. This one is more opaque. It lasts all day. You can actually see it on the lid and you can see side by side this one. Oh crap, I put this in the terrible spot. This one, yeah, this one is the Ulta one. This one's the Glossier one. So a little bit more opaque. It's easier to apply. I don't have to keep layering to get basically nothing or nothing to show up on my lid. Um, so that's that. Today, what I'm going to use is the Pixie, um, and I'm gonna top it with one of my Bodyography pigments. I'm hoping that this ends up looking well because I still want my makeup to look good today despite using products that I'm not crazy about. I'm gonna to try to layer this Bodyography pigment in Caviar, which is kind of like a sparkly brown over the top, just to bump it up. Bodyography pigments, I feel like they can make any eye look, just they can transform an eye look with like a touch. So I'm gonna take the Pixie Endless Shade Stick um, in the shade called Matte Cocoa. I'm just gonna use this all over my lid and blend it out with a brush. So right off the bat, just by applying um, that amount of product and blending it out, it's almost completely gone. And as far as I remember these, yeah, this is, all, this is also something I didn't like. They're not layerable. So as I go in to try to deepen this up, the lid starts to become patchy in certain areas. So the initial product we've laid down is not gripping to the lid and it's causing just an overall kind of uh, 
like Apache appearance. So from far away, doesn't look too bad, but I did a close up so you could see already the creasing that was kind of happening within the shadow and also the slight patchiness going on. Hoping I can fix that with uh, a little bit of my bodyography pigment. This is a pretty pigmented shade. Okay, a little bit better, a little bit more glammed up, some shimmery smokiness going on. Um, but yeah, that this look would not have been anything without the bodyography pigment. So let's move in to mascara. This is a new one I got in. Anytime I see a mascara with this particular style of wand, I know it's not gonna work for me. It's the new Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extension Mascara. What's funny about this is this is almost identical to the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid extent, liquid Lash Extensions. I think that's what that mascara is called. Uh, the wands are almost identical. So we have this very rubberized, thin, skinny bristle wand. These are my worst nightmare. They just don't work on my lashes. I have very short, straight eyelashes. I need the very traditional style wands that are almost like the real brush hairstyle and also something that can provide a little bit more volume. Anything that is just skinny like this, a little skinny brush. <sighs> they try their best, okay? I will say that this one um, is a little less clumping than the Thrive one, but overall, I I would much rather use something like uh, Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes. Charlotte Tilbury also makes one called Full Fat Lashes. My CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara, those just seem to work so much better with my lash type. Okay, I'm gonna finish this whole look off on a positive note. I'm actually gonna use something on my lips that I like because I went through my lip collection and let's just say I don't have around with lip products that if I see something in regards to a lip product, I kind of have an idea if I'm gonna like it and if I'm not gonna like it. And I don't keep lip products in my collection that I really don't use. So most of the things in my collection uh, are things that are suitable for me, for my standards. So I'm just gonna use a product that I don't feature enough and that I really do enjoy, which is the um, Lila B Lip Oils. This one's in the shade called B Remarkable. So I'm gonna use that on my lips. I think just with this Revlon lip liner, uh, it's in the shade Nude. Okay, so not, not too bad, not too shabby. This is very, 1920s flapper girl-esque vibes. Love how the makeup turned out. The question is, or it's not the question, it's really this is probably gonna happen. I highly doubt that this is going to perform well or look well after about the three hour mark. Um, especially the concealer, that's always an issue I had with it. Foundation though, the foundation, um, I'm not remembering it to look as bad as what I initially thought. However, it is quite a lot for what I prefer in a daily wear foundation. So I feel as if, like when I'm looking at my skin, I don't really see my skin. I do see a little bit of a heavier veil going on, which I don't prefer. Um, but overall, for more full coverage, fun look. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this look. I hope you enjoyed the alternatives that I provided to these products, especially if they're things you've used in the past and you just couldn't get on board with. If these are things that you love personally, again, we can't all love the same things, but uh, they just haven't been highly rated in my book for the past several months. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't generally do videos like this and I thought we would just switch it up. So hope you enjoyed um, and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.